him and the Thumim. And sincerely, I think there is no better time than now for us to have been considering these matters. Given the situation that the world is in and the church is in at this time, and the work that God is doing to bring a people into the place where he wants them to be. We know that when the, the judgment of God comes, when the visitation of God comes, the people who are of God are rejoicing. And the people who are the children of disobedience, you know, know that the time of reckoning is here. The people who are faithful are rejoicing because their maker is here and the people who are unfaithful you know have trepidation it's like you know the lord jesus christ told them they do not know the hour that the master will come but when he comes that you know they should not be found bullying their fellow servants and doing things that are not necessary so as we continue to look at they which have the urim and the tumim is a challenge to us to understand that the responsibility to have the Holy Man to me lies with us and not, you know, it's not an external thing, it's a responsibility that every child of God has for themselves, you know, and for their environment to make sure that the spirit of prophecy is not lacking in their lives. And there are many things that the enemy will do to fight, you know, that the people will not hear the voice of God. But we know that at times like this, it's very dangerous to be found outside, to be found not, you know, walking according to the leading of the Lord. So it's a time for us to shut ourselves in with God and to seek the face of God and if need be, repent. And if not, to rejoice in him for that which he has been doing in our lives. Praise God. So, we said that the mind of Christ is revealed to man and the church through the prophetic. When we talk about the prophetic in this sense, we are not saying, thus says the Lord. We are saying the ability for a people and a corporate body, for individuals, because we know the church is made up of individuals, and a corporate body to be able to hear the voice of God. We cannot be led by the carnal mind. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Anyone that is ruled by the fallen nature, that feeds from the waters of Egypt will die. But we are a people that God has called, and we drink from the rain that comes from heaven. In other words, the mind of God that is revealed to us, the, the factor that will most differentiate people at this time is the ability to hear God. It says, you shall hear behind you saying a voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And that is the battle. Everything the people experience now is either so they can have the Urim and the Tumim, the voice and the witness of the Spirit, or otherwise. So, when we are enjoined to love God and to keep His commandments and to walk faithfully before Him, it is so that we can have a friendship and a relationship with Him. And when we have that relationship, He doesn't hide anything from us. You know, He says He will do nothing except He first reveals it to His servants, the prophets. And, you know, not only will He reveal, He will bargain with us like He did with Abraham. That's the only place of safety at this time as we will see in Revelation 11. You know, it says, don't measure the outer court. The holy place has been given over. There is only one place to be, and it is in the holiest of all. So there is no room at this time, my brethren, for a people to, you know, not walk perfectly before God. Because in the holiest of God, all, it's a place where we commune with God face to face. And it is not a place that we do anything lightly. We know that, you know, the enemy has gone forth at this time, you know, with the events that are happening all over the world, given the COVID-19, and that it's as though there is a judgment. The Lord is visiting. 
And when he visits, the first place he visits is his house. You know, so in the father's house, there are many kinds of vessels, vessels to honor, some of gold, silver, wood, clay, some to dishonor. If, you know, a boss is coming, the people who will rejoice are those who have met their targets, who have exceeded it, who are waiting for a reward. But those who will shy away are those who have fallen short or are not doing what they ought to do. So we are not of those people. But these words are coming to us so that we can have understanding of the seasons and the times and what Israel ought to do. So the spirit of the Lord must rule and not the mind of fallen man. You know, when God tells us how, what we should do and what we should not do, it's not because he's a dictatorial God or he just wants to impinge on our liberties. The truth is that we have liberty in Christ at this time. Liberty to do whatever we want to do. But he says, let us not use our liberty as an occasion for the flesh, but to do what is unseen. So we are free. See, but we count it that if Christ died for us, then we are also dead to our own lives and we are alive to him. Praise the Lord. And the life that we live, we no longer live to ourselves, but we live to Christ who died for us. There has been a lie that has been propagated in the church that a people can do whatever they want, live however they want, you know, and still be in the grace of God. That is a pagan, it's not even a pagan doctrine, it's a demonic doctrine because even the people who were so-called pagans, they had some semblance of understanding. Praise the Lord. So we know that we have to obey God and walk with Him, you know, and, you know, not as we would desire to walk with Him, but as His Word enjoins us to. You know, there is necessity that a servant must be faithful. Praise God. So, without the counsel of God, there is a rule of fallen man. And also in Revelation 12, we see the woman that is clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. What does that mean? The powers of darkness are under her feet. She has authority. You have authority. I have authority over the powers of darkness. Powers of darkness are not something for the believer in Christ to be afraid of if we know who we are in him. And to know who we are in him, we must be able to have a mindset where we draw near him, draw close to him, you know, such that we see what he says, we say what he says, we think his thoughts. And then, can such a people be said to be clothed with the sun? You know, this is the sun that in the natural will burn. But a people, there is nothing to burn. They have been refined, they are purified. There is nothing to be burnt anymore. Other than that, the light of God will shine through them, you know, yeah, their lives are like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. No shadiness, nothing. And that is what God is doing at this time in the lives of you and I. Not in the lives of some, some very unique, different people somewhere, but in the lives of whosoever we live. In the life of he that heeds the call, come to me, all ye who labor, and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Enough of the the, the, the belief that, you know, grace, hyper grace, and grace means that the people can live the way they want. In fact, the grace of God is the power of God unto salvation for them that believes. You know, the, you know there is power in that grace. The power to preserve, to keep us. You know, and it's not to be confused with mercy. Because this is where... The most of most believers have erred. When a people talk about grace instead of mercy, they will not repent from their evil deeds. And this is an error. But when a person talks about mercy, it behoves the person that there is a need for them to repent. Mercy is the patience of God, not the lowering of the standard of God. The God is a righteous God. You know, and we must be holy just as he is holy. Praise God. So, God's mercy 
is his long suffering, his loving kindness, waiting for the sinner to repent and to return their gaze back to him. And the grace of God is the power of God that keeps us righteous and holy, that, is, that presents us before him without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Praise the Lord. So it's worth repeating that so that it can sink into us. You know, God will punish evil. He hates evil so much that he died for evil and sin. He died for it. You know, he says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Say, God forbid. We cannot crucify Christ over again. You know, we cannot live for ourselves if we reckon ourselves to be indeed dead and alive in him who died for us. So, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the earth and then shall the end come. This is the time of the end because if people are knowing what it is, what true righteousness is, what the true gospel is, other gospels have been preached, people have been deceived, people have been lured away to doctrines of demons, you know, but God is recovering his church at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We said that there is in every person the object of our affection. The Bible says that God is love and you know if we love, we are born of God. So the first thing we know about love is that love is a passion, is an affection. And, you know, for them who love him, they will be passionate for him. They will be affectionate towards him. So one of the things the enemy uses is that he creates passions that compete for God in our lives. For some, it is hurt. For some, it is pain. For some, it is trauma. For some, it is a cause. Say, oh, uh, we're fighting breast cancer, even though it looks righteous on the outside. Whatever it is that our heart cleaves to, more than it cleaves to God, is an idol. And, you know, these things can only rouse passions that are not righteous, that are not born out of the love of God. When we look at 1 John 2, we begin to see, you know, that most of these passions work to, through anger and bitterness, you know, and hatred. So when we, whoever it is, whatever it is that we have passionate dislike for or passionate affection for other than God, the person cannot live in righteousness. You see, he that says he is in the light and hated his brother, is in darkness already. Who is your brother? Sometimes your brother is the person who oppresses you. Sometimes your brother is what you desire the most and you do not have. Praise the Lord. And once those passions are aroused, you know, it's not possible. The Spirit of God will be far away. The Bible talks about frustrating the grace of God. So, we must take heed, you know, to guide our hearts with all diligence, for out of it proceeds the issues of life. Praise the Lord. So, we looked about, we looked at, you know, the heart of man and the will of man. Man is able to decide to walk with God or not to walk with God, you know. Man is able to decide how far he goes, you know, and that's why the Bible talks about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's why the Bible talks about the Lord Jesus Christ learning obedience through the things that he suffered. Praise the Lord. In that he feared, even the Lord Jesus feared. So today we have a generation of believers but remember there's always that company who have not bowed their knees to bow who believe that they can do what they want work what they want drink their own water eat their own bread so let's just be called by your name we'll behave the way we want 
We will not keep your commandments. We will hate whoever we want. We will walk in malice. We will hate our trauma. We will blame other people. We will not take responsibility, they say. And yet we expect God to be our God. Brethren, that is not the gospel. That is another gospel. That is not God. That is idol worship. That is the golden calf. It has a semblance of God. But God is not there. God is not in it. We looked at Baal, you know, that masquerades at God. You know, it means Lord, but it's not a capital L-O-R-D. And it stands in the place of God and deceives. The devil is a deceiver. It tells people that you can continue to live the life you want, behave the way you want, and God will still be happy with you. Because he's a loving God, and because he has to lower his standards, if not, nobody can make it. And because it is not possible to be perfect on earth. But we know that that is the spirit of the Antichrist. That says that Christ did not come in the flesh. What does it mean for Christ to have come in the flesh? He came in the flesh because he was a man of life, passions like you and I, and yet without sin. And God is telling us that it is possible through him to also live a life that is holy. Praise the Lord. What will differentiate people at this time, these perilous times that we are in, is the ability to hear God or not hear God. Is the ability to have the Spirit of God resident within us or not to have Him. Because in the holiest of all, something happens. God communes with the high priest face to face as a man to his friend. And we know that in Christ, the veil was rent, signifying that all have access into that place of communion with the Father. Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, came so that each and every one of us will have that communion with God. But the, the, the well men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares, you know, and sowed the demonic doctrines, telling people that that is, that is for a reserved few, and that is actually not impossible. You know, but that is actually the essence of our call. It's the essence of salvation. Praise the Lord. So, the Urim and the Thummim, which we looked at and we, we found to be lights and perfections that was con contained upon the heart of the priest. Remember, in Christ were a kingdom of priests and kings. And he carried, uh, in Exodus 28.30, he says, You shall put on, Exodus 28.30, says, You shall put on the breastplate of judgment. You shall put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim. And they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron shall carry the judgment of the sons of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. So we talked about the heart and the, 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 the primacy of the heart's condition. It is the heart that we use for love, it is the heart that we use for passion. The believer has only one love. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all thy strength. And everything that is within you, you will love the Lord with it. And only when we love the Lord are we able to love our fellow man. Only when we love the Lord are we able to love our neighbor as ourselves. And loving anything other than the Creator is an aberration. It will not work. You know, it will lead to failure. Because the power that is in us, the ability for us, to overcome is contained in God. And it is only God that can shed his love abroad in our hearts. And that is why the Bible says that he that says he knows God and that hates his neighbor is in darkness even until now. So some people come and say, how come this gospel is not working for so and so or for them? Say, I believe God, I pray, I fast, I go to church, I pay my tithes, I do this, I do that. And yet, in this area of my life, there is no movement. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. So we have to 
the problem is not with God. We have to look to ourselves. We have to look inwards. We have to set our hearts upon the Lord. You know, we have to love our fellow man. You know, we have to love one another and do the will of God. And only when we do that is the love of God being able, is, you know, is, it, it, it finds an expression through us. The love of God finding an expression through us, you know, brings us to a place where we love others. And when we love others, the Bible says that we are dwelling in the light, the Urim. And when we dwell in the light, perfection will come. Because the counsel of God is the perfect counsel. It cannot be cooked up. You know, it cannot be engineered. Look at the story of Balak and Balaam. You know, Bala, Balaam came to God with a, a wrong heart. And because it was Israel, it was impossible for him to curse Israel. And so, when he began to prophesy, you know, he could only prophesy what God said. So it's, there is no prophecy other than a prophecy that comes from God. Every mind of God that does not come from the place of love of God, submission and obedience to the will of God, it's not prophecy. It is the water of Egypt. In the waters that flow through Egypt, you have all forms of diseases, bacteria, cholera, all sorts. It cannot give life because it's of the earth. But we are the heavenly Jerusalem. And the water that we feed on, the water is the life, is the, 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 the spirit of, that guides us, is from above. The land that drinks of the rain of heaven. May the Lord help us to understand in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, we looked at 1 Samuel 15, the rejection of Saul. We looked at, you know, when the voice of God became scarce in the land and, you know, Samuel and Saul had to go to the witch of Endor, you know, and, you know, how that further sealed his curse because he did not love, he did not obey God, he didn't love God. He loved rather the benefits that he gets from God, as we will see in, in later editions or episodes of this discussion. You know, so he he didn't set his affection on God. He set his affection on the benefits or the, 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 the provisions of God. And he put the people before God. And because of that, he couldn't hear from God. So... God is not an idol that we put in a corner and tell him, you will do this for me right now, and if you don't do it, this I will not do this for you. And we know many believers that talk like that. You know. But he is God all by himself. There is no place for argument. We looked at God telling us that we have to come out of confusion, Babylon. Babylon is a place of mixture and confusion. Babylon is a place where a people do not walk with God. They, they, they are, their tongue is confused. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They want to live their own lives and still be approved of God. And we saw how that confusion is a terrible confusion. And God is telling a people, separate yourself from the rule of man. When you put a man over yourself and you give him rule over you, and you say that man should seek God for you and you will stand afar, and you make him your God, is an abomination. And God says he will punish all those who lead men astray unto themselves, who like Hophni and Phinehas take the glory that is due him, 
and pollute the sacrifices of his people. And God also said, for people who yield to those people, they will bear the same punishment. Praise the Lord. The enemy is as though the, the bottomless pit is open and he's going out in all vengeance. He knows his time is short and he's causing confusion on the earth. You know, the people who sit on the fence are open targets. You know, right now, if you know God and you're hearing this message, obey the voice of God. You know, separate yourselves from idols. Separate yourself from spiritual coldness. So pray, separate yourself from, from compromise in the place of work, in your business, in every area of your life. And seek the, the God because you are a priest and you are a king. He does not expect you to have a priest and a king over yourself. To, to, to wait and look for somebody to tell you the counsel of God. Right?